Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. This video is one of several videos I've created on factoring polynomials. In fact, it is the most basic video of all about factoring. We're going to be talking about factoring out a common factor. Now, if you look at the uh, title of this section, you'll see that I'm using the word factor twice in two different senses. We do that in mathematics. We use the word factor to represent a verb. Uh, a verb, um, it, when we use factor as a verb, we mean to write something as a product. So in very basic mathematics, we would say factor 6, and what that means is to write 6 is the factor of 2 times 3. But we also use factor as a noun, and this is in this word we're using it in the sense of a noun. A, when we use it as a noun, a factor is a quantity that is multiplied by some other quantity to give a desired result. Or I want to focus most on this phrase right here, a quantity that is multiplied. So in the same example, but looking at it a different way, 2 is a factor of 6 because 2 is multiplied by something else to give you 6. So as we look at polynomials, we're going to factor as a verb by looking for a common factor. Now, what we're going to do is going to be built on a property of mathematics called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. Anytime you have any three real numbers, a, b, and c, you can say that a multiplied by the parenthesis, by in parentheses b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c, and it's called the distributive property because it looks like you take this first factor of a and you distribute it across the parentheses. In fact, you're distributing multiplication over addition. If I take the distributive property and write it so-called in reverse, just reverse the two sides, you can get a different point of view out of this. When I look at the side on the left, I notice that there is a factor of A in both of these terms. Factor in the sense of something that is multiplied by something else, and it's the same factor. What the distributive property tells you when you read it in reverse is that if you have a common factor between two terms, you can bring it out or factor it out leaving the other two quantities in parentheses, like this. And you can always check that because the distributive property says you could multiply the a times the b and the a times the c and get a times b plus a times c. This is the key element towards, or the key element in factoring out a common factor. Now let's see how that applies to some polynomials. Here's a really simple one. Now, as I look at these, the two terms of the polynomial, what I want to look for is whether or not there is a common factor, something in both terms that is multiplied by something else to give you the entire term. Entire term. You'll notice that both of those terms has a factor of an x in it, so that's definitely part of the common factor. But if you also think about the six and the nine, 6 and 9 both in, have a factor, a number that multiplied by something else gives you the 6 and the 9, namely 3. So I'm going to, in these two terms, rewrite them to identify that there is a common factor of a 3 and a common factor of an x. In the first term, it's 3x times 2 that gives me 6. In the second term, it's 3x times 3y that gives me 9xy. Then going back and looking briefly at our distributive law in reverse, if there is a factor in common between two terms, then we can bring that out or factor it out using parentheses. So I can factor out the 3x, and what's left behind in parentheses is whatever factor remains besides that common factor namely 2 from the first term and 3y from the second. That's factoring out a common factor. This next example is a little bit more involved. I have both coefficients, the whole, num the, uh, whole numbers, 
and I also have variables raised to powers. As I look at these variables raised to powers, what I realize, or remember, I should say, is that x squared means two x's multiplied together, x cubed means three x's multiplied together, and let's say y to the fourth means four y's multiplied together. So if I look carefully at all of those terms, I notice that there is a common factor involving uh, powers of x, also powers of y, and also the whole number coefficients. Looking at the whole number coefficients, notice that each one of those is divisible by 3. So I'm going to identify a common factor by recognizing that there's a 3 in every term. We'll do that all the way through as a common factor, leaving a little extra space. If I have two x's multiplied together here and three here, what they would have in common would be x squared, two of them, the lowest power of x that you see. So I can have see a common factor of an x squared. This one, The first term has just an x squared. The, the second one has an x squared times an x. And the same thing with the third one. So there's a common factor of a power of x using the lowest power of x. Similarly, looking at the powers of y, the lowest power of y is y squared. There would be a y squared in each one of these terms. y squared, whoops, y squared, y squared. What's left from each term? Well, we'll look carefully. If I look at the first term, What's left, or what I would multiply by the 3x squared y squared to get back to my 9x squared y cubed, I'd need a 3, and I'd need no more x's. I've got plenty of x's, but I'd need another y so that I have y to the third. From the second term, I would need a 2 to give me the 6. I would need one more x to give me the x cubed, but I've got plenty of y's. And in the third term, to get back to the 15x cubed y to the fourth, I would need a 5 to give me the 15. And I need one more x, and I'd need a y squared, two more factors of y. So I identify that there's a common factor in every one of those terms of 3x squared y squared. Once I have that, I can factor that out using this distributive law in reverse, and what will remain in parentheses is what I have written in purple here, the remaining factors from each one of the terms, like this, and that is now factored. So that's the idea of looking for a common factor. If, if variables are involved, the common factor is the lowest power to which a variable is raised, among the terms of the polynomial. All right, let's do one more, and this one is very odd, but it's leading towards something else in a future video. Here, what I see in common between the two terms is a binomial. That can happen. This is my common factor, and by the distributive law in reverse, I can factor out that common factor and what would remain in parentheses is whatever is left from the two terms of the expression. There would be a 2r left from the first term and a 7s left from the second term. And you might say, well, that looks a little bit weird, but did I factor it? To factor is to write as a product, again, going back to the first slide. And what I have done is I have written that expression as one polynomial times another. So indeed, I have factored it, factored it by factoring out a common factor. So I hope that's helpful. Future videos will go into other techniques for factoring polynomials.